Chapters 1 to 6, Book 2, Volume 1 of Le Mot d'Artur. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Chris Tierney. Le Mot d'Artur, Volume 1 by Sir Thomas Mallory. Book 2, Chapters 1 to 6. Chapter 1. After the death of Uther Pendragon reigned Arthur his son, the which had great war in his days, for to get all England into his hand. For there were many kings within the realm of England, and in Wales, Scotland, and Cornwall. So it befell on a time when King Arthur was at London, there came a knight and told the king tidings how that the King Rients of North Wales had reared a great number of people, and were entered into the land, and burnt and slew the king's true liege people. If this be true, said Arthur, it were great shame unto mine estate, but that he were mightily withstood. It is truth, said the knight, for I saw the host myself. Well, said the king, let make a cry, that all the lords, knights, and gentlemen of arms should draw unto a castle called Camelot in those days, and there the king would let make a council general and a great jousts. So when the king was come thither with all his baronage, and lodged as they seemed best, there was come a damoiselle, the which was sent on message from the great Lady Lyle of Avelion. And when she came before King Arthur, she told from whom she came, and how she was sent on message unto him for these causes. Then she let her mantle fall that was richly furred, and then was she girt with a noble sword, whereof the king had marvel, and said, Damoiselle, for what cause are ye girt with that sword? it beseemeth you not. Now shall I tell you, said the damoiselle, this sword that I am girt withal doth me great sorrow and cumbrance, for I may not be delivered of this sword but by a knight, but he must be a passing good man of his hands and of his deeds, and without villainy or treachery, and without treason. And if I may find such a knight that hath all these virtues, he may draw out this sword out of the sheath. For I have been at King Rience's, it was told me, there were passing good knights, and he and all his knights have essayed it, and none can speed. This is a great marvel, said Arthur, if this be sooth. I will myself essay to draw out the sword, not presuming upon myself that I am the best knight, but that I will begin to draw at your sword in giving example to all the barons, that they shall essay every each one after other when I have essayed it. Then Arthur took the sword by the sheath and by the girdle, and pulled at it eagerly, but the sword would not out. "'Sir,' said the damoiselle, "'you need not to pull half so hard, "'for he that shall pull it out "'shall do it with little might.' "'Ye say well,' said Arthur. "'Now I say ye, all my barons, "'but beware ye be not defiled with shame, "'treachery, nor guile.' "'Then it will not avail,' said the damoiselle, "'for he must be a clean knight without villainy, "'and of a gentle strain of father-side and mother-side.' Most of all the barons of the round table that were there at that time assayed all by row, but there might none speed. Wherefore the damoiselle made great sorrow out of measure, and said, Alas, I weened in this court had been the best knights without treachery or treason. By my faith, said Arthur, here are good knights, as I deem, as any be in the world. But their grace is not to help you, wherefore I am displeased. Chapter 2 then fell it so that time there was a poor knight with King Arthur, that had been a prisoner with him half a year and more for slaying of a knight, the which was cousin unto King Arthur. The name of this knight was called Balin, and by good means of the barons he was delivered out of prison, for he was a good man named of his body, and he was born in Northumberland. And so he went privily into the court and saw this adventure, whereof it raised his heart, and he would assay it as other knights did. But for he was poor and poorly arrayed, he put him not far in press. But in his heart he was fully assured to do as well, if his grace happed him, as any knight that there was. And as the damoiselle took her leave of Arthur, and of all the barons, so departing, this knight Balin called unto her, and said, Damoiselle, I pray you, of your courtesy, suffer me as well to assay as these lords, though that I be so poorly clothed. In my heart meseemeth I am fully assured as some of these others, and meseemeth in my heart to speed right well. 
The damoiselle beheld the poor knight, and saw he was a likely man, but for his poor raiment she thought he should be of no worship without villainy or treachery. And then she said unto the knight, Sir, it needeth not to put me to more pain or labor, for it seemeth not you to speed there as other has failed. Ah, fair damoiselle, said Balin, worthiness, and good tatches, and good deeds, are not only in arraignment, but manhood and worship is hid within man's person, and many a worshipful knight is not known unto all people, and therefore worship and hardiness is not in arraignment. By God, said the damoiselle, ye say sooth, therefore ye shall essay to do what ye may. Then Balin took the sword by the girdle and sheath, and drew it out easily, and when he looked on the sword it pleased him much. Then had the king and all the barons great marvel that Balin had done that adventure, and many knights had great despite of Balin. Certes, said the damosel, this is a passing good knight, and the best that ever I found, and most of worship without treason, treachery, or villainy, and many marvels shall he do. Now, gentle and courteous knight, give me the sword again. Nay, said Balin, for this sword will I keep, but it be taken from me with force. Well, said the damosel, ye are not wise to keep the sword from me, for ye shall slay with the sword the best friend that ye have, and the man that ye most love in the world, and the sword shall be your destruction. I shall take the adventure, said Balin, that God will ordain me, but the sword ye shall not have at this time by the faith of my body. Ye shall repent it within short time, said the damosel, for I would have the sword more for your avail than for mine, for I am passing heavy for your sake. For ye will not believe that sword shall be your destruction, and that is great pity. With that the damosel departed, making great sorrow. Anon after, Balin sent for his horse and armor, and so would depart from the court, and took his leave of King Arthur. Nay, said the king, I suppose ye will not depart so lightly from this fellowship. I suppose ye are displeased that I have showed you unkindness. Blame me the less, for I was misinformed against you. But I weened ye had not been such a knight as ye are, of worship and prowess. And if ye will abide in this court among my fellowship, I shall so advance you as ye shall be pleased. God thank your highness, said Balin. Your bounty and highness may no man praise half to the value. But at this time I must needs depart, beseeching you always of your good grace. Truly, said the king, I am right wroth for your departing. I pray you, fair knight, that ye tarry not long, and ye shall be right welcome to me and to my barons, and I shall amend all miss that I have done against you. God thank your great lordship, said Balin, and therewith made him ready to depart. Then the most part of the knights of the round table said that Balin did not this adventure all only by might, but by witchcraft. Chapter 3 The meanwhile that this knight was making him ready to depart, there came into the court a lady that hight the Lady of the Lake. And she came on horseback, richly beseen, and saluted King Arthur, and there asked him a gift that he promised her when she gave him the sword. That is sooth, said Arthur, a gift I promised you, but I have forgotten the name of my sword that ye gave me. The name of it, said the lady, is Excalibur, that is as much to say as cut steel. Ye say well, said the king, ask what ye will, and ye shall have it, and it lie in my power to give it. Well, said the lady, I ask the head of the knight that hath won the sword, or else the damosel's head that brought it. I take no force, though I have both their heads, for he slew my brother, a good knight and a true, and that gentlewoman was causer of my father's death. Truly, said King Arthur, I may not grant neither of their heads with my worship. Therefore ask what ye will else, and I shall fulfill your desire. I will ask none other thing, said the lady. When Balin was ready to depart, he saw the lady of the lake, that by her means had slain Balin's mother and he had sought her three years, and when it was told him that she asked his head of King Arthur, he went to her straight and said, Evil be you found. You would have my head, and therefore ye shall lose yours. And with his sword lightly he smote off her head before King Arthur. Alas, for shame, said Arthur. Why have ye done so? Ye have shamed me and all my court, for this was a lady that I was beholden to, and hither she came under my safe conduct. I shall never forgive you that trespass. Sir, said Balin, me forthinketh of your displeasure, for this same lady was the untruest lady living, 
and by enchantment and sorcery she hath been the destroyer of many good knights. And she was causer that my mother was burnt, through her falsehood and treachery. What cause soever ye had, said Arthur, ye should have forborne her in my presence. Therefore, think not the contrary, ye shall repent it, for such another despite had I never in my court. Therefore withdraw you out of my court in all haste ye may. Then Balin took up the head of the lady, and bare it with him to his hostelry, and there he met with his squire, that was sorry he had displeased King Arthur. And so they rode forth out of the town. Now, said Balin, we must depart. Take thou this head, and bear it to my friends, and tell them how I have sped, and tell my friends in Northumberland that my most foe is dead. Also tell them how I am out of prison, and what adventure befell me at the getting of this sword. Alas, said the squire, ye are greatly to blame for to displease King Arthur. As for that, said Balin, I will hie me in all the haste that I may, to meet with King Rience and destroy him, either else to die therefore. And if it may hap me to win him, then will King Arthur be my good and gracious lord. Where shall I meet you? said the squire. In King Arthur's court, said Balin. So his squire and he departed at that time. Then King Arthur and all the court made great dole, and had shame of the death of the Lady of the Lake. Then the king buried her richly. Chapter 4 At that time there was a knight, the which was the king's son of Ireland, and his name was Lancior, the which was an orgulous knight, and counted himself one of the best of the court, and he had great despite at Balin for the achieving of the sword, that any should be accounted more hardy, or more of prowess. And he asked King Arthur if he would give him leave to ride after Balin, and to avenge the despite that he had done. Do your best, said Arthur. I am right wroth with Balin. I would he were quit of the despite that he hath done to me and to my court. Then this Lancior went to his hostelry to make him ready. In the meanwhile came Merlin unto the court of King Arthur, and there was told him the adventure of the sword and the death of the Lady of the Lake. Now shall I say you, said Merlin, this same damosel that here standeth, that brought the sword unto your court, I shall tell you the cause of her coming. She was the falsest damosel that liveth. Say not so, said they. She hath a brother, a passing good knight of prowess, and a full true man. And this damosel loved another knight that held her to paramour. And this good knight her brother met with the knight that held her to paramour, and slew him by force of his hands. When this false damosel understood this, she went to the Lady Lyle of Avelion, and besought her of help, to be avenged on her own brother. Chapter 5 And so this Lady Lyle of Avelion took her this sword that she brought with her, and told her there should be no man pull it out of the sheath, but if he be one of the best knights of this realm, and he should be hard and full of prowess, and with that sword he should slay her brother. This was the cause that the damosel came into this court. I know it as well as ye. Would God she had not come into this court, but she came never in fellowship of worship to do good, but always great harm, and that knight that hath achieved the sword shall be destroyed by that sword, for the which will be great damage, for there liveth not a knight of more prowess than he is, and he shall do unto you, my lord Arthur, great honour and kindness, and it is great pity he shall not endure but a while, for of his strength and hardiness I know not his match living. So the knight of Ireland armed him at all points, and dressed his shield on his shoulder, and mounted upon horseback, and took his spear in his hand, and rode after a great pace, as much as his horse might go. And within a little space on a mountain he had a sight of Valin, and with a loud voice he cried, Abide, knight, for ye shall abide whether ye will or nil, and the shield that is to fore you shall not help. When Balin heard the noise, he turned his horse fiercely and said, Fair knight, what will ye with me? Will ye joust with me? Yea, said the Irish knight, therefore come I after you. Peradventure, said Balin, it had been better to have holden you at home, for many a man weaneth to put his enemy to a rebuke and oft it falleth to himself. Of what court be ye sent from? said Balin. I am come from the court of King Arthur, said the knight of Ireland, that come hither for to revenge the despite ye did this day to King Arthur and to his court. Well, said Balin, I see well I must have ado with you. 
that me forthinketh for to grieve King Arthur or any of his court. And your quarrel is full simple, said Balin, unto me, for the lady that is dead did me great damage, and else would I have been loath as any knight that liveth for to slay a lady. Make you ready, said the knight Lancior, and dress you unto me, for that one shall abide in the field. Then they took their spears, and came together as much as their horses might drive, and the Irish knight smote Balin on the shield that all went shivers off his spear, and Balin hit him through the shield, and the hauberk perished, and so pierced through his body and the horse's croup, and anon turned his horse fiercely and drew out his sword, and wist not that he had slain him, and then he saw him lie as a dead corpse. Chapter 6 Then he looked by him, and was ware of a damosel that came riding full fast as the horse might ride on a fair palfrey. And when she espied that Lancior was slain, she made sorrow out of measure, and said, O Balin, two bodies thou hast slain in one heart, and two hearts in one body, and two souls thou hast lost. And therewith she took the sword from her love that lay dead, and fell to the ground in a swoon. And when she arose, she made great dole out of measure, the which sorrow grieved Balin passingly sore, and he went unto her for to have taken the sword out of her hand, but she held it so fast he might not take it out of her hand unless he should have hurt her. And suddenly she set the pommel to the ground, and rove herself through the body. When Balin espied her deeds, he was passing heavy in his heart, and ashamed that so fair a damosel had destroyed herself for the love of his death. Alas, said Balin, me repenteth sore the death of this knight, for the love of this damosel, for there was much true love betwixt them both, and for sorrow might not longer behold him, but turned his horse and looked toward a great forest. And there he was ware, by the arms, of his brother Balan. And when they were met, they put off their helms and kissed together, and wept for joy and pity. Then Balan said, I little weened to have met with you at this sudden adventure. I am right glad of your deliverance out of your dolorous prisonment. For a man told me, in the castle of four stones, that you were delivered, and that man had seen you in the court of King Arthur. And therefore I come hither into this country, for here I suppose to find you. Anon the knight Balin told his brother of his adventure of the sword, and of the death of the Lady of the Lake, and how King Arthur was displeased with him. Wherefore he sent this knight after me, that lieth here dead, and the death of this damosel grieveth me sore. So doth it me, said Balan, but ye must take the adventure that God will ordain you. Truly, said Balan, I am right heavy that my lord Arthur is displeased with me, for he is the most worshipful knight that reigneth now on earth, and his love will I get, or else will I put my life in adventure. For the king Rience lieth at a siege in the castle Terrabil, and thither will we draw in all haste, to prove our worship and prowess upon him. I will well, said Bolan, that we do, and we will help each other as brethren ought to do. End of Book 2, Chapters 1-6